Today we celebrate the fourth week of the Advent season. The fourth candle of our Advent wreath celebrates the gift of love. We prepare ourselves to protect Jesus in love as we prepare for Jesus to come again into our heart. The fourth candle represents the love that we have in our heart as we prepare for the light of Jesus to come into our hearts again at Christmas time. The story of Joseph is the story of God sending his son to earth to be under the protection of a human father, Joseph. Joseph was asked to protect a child that was not his. Only later did he understand that he needed to protect God's son. And we wait in love for Jesus, who we need to protect as he comes into our hearts again at Christmas. As we prepare for the story of Joseph, let us pray the Angelus. The word Angelus comes from the Latin Angelus Domini, meaning Angel of the Lord. The Angelus is the coming alive of the visit of Gabriel through prayer. This is a prayer of the church that is said three times a day, at 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m. The present-day form of the Angelus traces back to 1560, and is a prayer composed of a short sentence followed by a response and then a Hail Mary. It is a beautiful prayer reminding us of Christ's incarnation, of the gift of himself, born to come, to die, and to save. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech Thee, O Lord, Thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ Thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by His passion and cross be brought to the glory of His resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, being a good man and righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, 
for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken to the Lord through the prophets. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took her as his wife. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Joseph. I live in Nazareth. Being a carpenter, I like to spend time building things quietly. I build yokes and plows to help the farmers around Nazareth. It was through one of my transactions with one of the farmers who liked my work that I met my wife-to-be, Mary. She was beautiful, with an inner light that shone through like a candle flame, and I was honored to make her my wife in a lovely ceremony. During the year of waiting, I was looking forward to the day that I would bring her to my home and make our entire life beautiful together. Inspired by her love, I worked feverishly, all the while imagining what it would be like to have a wife and to be part of a family. Then one day, Mary left Nazareth, and I did not see her face for three months. Word around town was that she had gone to visit a cousin, but I had not heard a word from her for quite some time. When she arrived back to Nazareth, she told me she was pregnant. I felt betrayed. It was a staggering blow, for I knew well that that child was not mine. In my hurt and shame, I considered first talking to the civil magistrate, but I knew she would be stoned to death when they learned about her adultery. And I could not bear, even with my heart breaking, to put out that light, to destroy someone so beautiful. Then I thought that perhaps I could just give her a bill of divorce. After all, the law did say that our betrothal could be brought to an end with a divorce. That didn't feel right either, so finally I prayed. I delayed even though I wanted to take action and rid of myself of this whole terrible situation. In spite of what I thought of Mary had done to me in destroying all of our dreams and our life together, and in spite of my moral dilemma in not keeping the law, I could not hurt her like this, not when she needed me the most. I was so glad I waited and I prayed and listened to God, for God finally told me that Mary was not guilty of adultery but highly favored by God, who would have a child by the Holy Spirit. A strange story to me. I am just a common man who works with his hands, but the mystery of God is unknowable to humanity. God created the earth out of dust, so certainly he could have created a virgin to have a child by the Holy Spirit. When the dream finally came from God to take action, I believed that I had been chosen to protect this new life of God's Son. And when the word came that the senses would be taken, even though Mary was very pregnant, Mary and I went together to Bethlehem. We traveled over 65 miles. We went to Bethlehem, where I had to search and search because there was nowhere to stay. I talked to everyone I could, every cousin, every stranger, but I could find no place for my beautiful family, except a stable. But that story is for later. I was chosen to protect God's Son. What have you been entrusted with? How do you need to protect Jesus in your life so that he can come fully into your heart this Christmas? Lord God, as we prepare during this Advent season to receive the light of your Son into our hearts in a new way, help us to be humble like a child, open to receiving your gifts, and ready to remember those that need our help and all of those in need. Help us, like Joseph, to protect the life that has been entrusted to us, that we may listen to you and to discover what your will is for us. Help us to reflect when reflection is your will and to take action when taking action is your will and help us to know the difference. Help us to be willing to protect the miracle of Jesus in our own life and help us to share that message with others with love that they can feel so that we can recreate our world to mirror the true radiance of heaven. We pray in the power and glory of your Son. Amen.